There's a new threat to PG&E's grid as we head into peak fire season. Investigative reporter Jackson Vanderbecken tells us the danger emerged after a wooden power pole fell in Danville last year, sending a live line plunging into a backyard swimming pool. They did say that it's not uncommon these days because these poles are, are very old. When Bob Chase first saw the power pole tilting near his backyard in Danville last July, it was leaning about four feet. We just thought that that was fairly normal for an old pole like that. But a few days later, he heard a crash. The whole pole fell over and the lines fell into our pool. And you have kids that play in the pool, right? Your grandkids? Uh, this is in the middle of summer, so we could have been swimming, but it was a weekday. Obviously, you don't expect something like that to happen. It was pretty traumatic. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. PG&E's probe found that undetected dry rot near the base of that pole caused it to fail and prompted the company to acknowledge a safety concern for more than a half million similar vintage power poles across its system. That's a lot of poles. Former CPC Commissioner Catherine Sandoval focused a lot on power pole safety during her six-year tenure. This is a massive safety problem affecting over 500,000 utility poles located God only knows where in pg and &E's service territory. The Danville pole, along with more than a half million other at-risk poles, all date back to before 1989. That's when pg and &E stopped using selen, a highly toxic pesticide-laced gas, to prevent infestation from insects and the fungus that causes dry rot. The utility opted to use newer, more environmentally friendly methods, and the company knew the selen would only work for so long. In fact, in 2007, PG&E field engineers warned the aging poles wouldn't survive more than a decade. But rather than replace them, the company decided to leave the at-risk selen poles in place, checking for rot by hitting them with sounding hammers and injecting fumigant in the test holes drilled at their base but PG&E admits in Danville that those efforts failed to detect significant internal dry rot in the pole that led to the failure. The company says crews used old test holes to keep from weakening the poles with new ones, but that meant not finding as much rot. In a statement, PG&E told us it's revamping its testing, inspections, and training as it works to assess which of its aging poles should be reinforced or replaced. But it's running short on time. Nearly three quarters are four decades old. That's the threshold where they're known to pose the greatest risk of breaking from rot. And more than 200,000 are in high fire risk areas. They keep running past failure. And in, in the case of what happened in Danville, pg and &E is just lucky that they didn't kill somebody. Sandoval says pg and &E stockholders, not ratepayers, should have to pay the costs of belated fixes to its aging system. My guess is that the polls was, was um, slowly leaning over a period of time. Chase says pg and &E told him the fallen line only would have been live for a split second, but he figures that would have been long enough to do some serious damage if anyone had been in his pool. It's kind of scary, you know, we're, we're fortunate that nothing like that happened. Jackson Vanderbecken, NBC, Bay Area News. If you have a story tip about this story or anything else, give us a call for our investigative unit, 888-996-TIPS, or visit our website, nbcbayarea.com slash investigations.